How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood med student, trans med student, and today we're going to be talking about hair loss when starting testosterone replacement, hormone replacement therapy, because it is a common fear a lot of trans guys who are thinking about, trans guys and trans masculine people who are thinking about taking testosterone as a form of gender affirmation, worry about, especially if they have a family history of hair loss. It is also something I was totally afraid of when I started taking testosterone and although uh, I've only been on testosterone for four years so I, I wouldn't really see the effects uh, much of uh, long-term effects of testosterone on my hair follicles. Uh, it is something that I want to talk about and just so that everyone who is considering taking testosterone who wants to preemptively make some you know decisions on uh, how they will take testosterone uh, just so that you are aware. So the first thing I want to mention is that hair loss when someone takes testosterone or is someone who is uh, doesn't need to take testosterone but they're born with testicles <laughs> that make testosterone is that it is a form of alopecia. It's a medical term we use for people who experience hair thinning and loss of hair follicles over time. And But there's many forms of alopecia but the ones that's associated with testosterone is called androgenic alopecia. It's, it's a uh, hair loss specifically attributed uh, to androgens, which are hormones uh, that are masculinizing, like testosterone and testosterone's um, byproduct DHT. And DHT is actually the main chemical hormone that is associated with androgenic alopecia, uh, testosterone-dominated hair loss. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about the risks and uh, association of genetics on hair loss to gauge whether or not you might experience hair loss. There are also ways to prevent hair loss once you do start testosterone, but um, including that information in this video will make it way, 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 way too long. So that's going to be a, a future video because I do put some products in my hair uh, to prevent uh, hair thinning and hair loss, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about it in a future video. So. As I mentioned before, testosterone isn't actually the hormone that's causing hair loss once you start to take, taking testosterone. Testosterone makes another byproduct hormone called DHT, which honestly uh, influences a lot of masculinizing features. And um, depending on who you are, your genetics, uh, your body may or may not convert more or less DHT after you start taking testosterone. The more DHT you have, the more likely there might be some influence on hair loss. But I will also say that DHT plays important aspects as far as muscle building and also facial hair growth. So I have pretty, pretty nice facial hair that's coming in and it's still um, still coming in after four years of being on testosterone. That DHT has really good uh, masculinizing positive uh, effects from. So DHT is not entirely bad, but it does affect your hair follicles. But another huge aspect of um, hair loss when it comes to testosterone and DHT is the fact that uh, your genetics play a huge part on whether or not um, you will experience hair loss and that can be a very complicated question to answer because a long time ago people used to think that hair loss is an autosomal dominant inheritance which if you have no idea what I just said if you took high school biology you'll learn your little Punnett square stuff um, what it means is that if a family member were to have hair loss, then most likely you will also have hair loss. But we know over time that this, this form of um, hypothesis when it comes to hair loss, androgenic alopecia, is more complicated and nuanced. Although there is a, a very much dominant trait when it comes to hair loss, we also know that hormones play a huge part in whether or not you will express that uh, gene and also, we also know that there's multiple genes that can be associated hair loss. Uh, a study that looked at six different six different parts of one's human genome that can contribute to hair loss. So it's both uh, genetic, uh, autosomal dominant genetic, which is linked to whether or not a family member has hair loss. It is also linked to how much hormone expression you have. And also, there are different genes that can contribute to hair loss. And uh, another aspect of this type of specific hair loss is that uh, androgenic alopecia most, most associates with hair loss in the bitemporal region, which is around here next to your, uh, next right above your ears. And then it will affect the vertex, which is the crown of your head. So 
those is where androgenic alopecia are those places where you'll see the most hair loss association. So to make this really simple, I'm going to try to talk about the types of things that have the most influence on hair loss because we can try and think about all the genes that's associated all day and try to create these predictive models on whether or not we'll have hair loss, but that's going to make us go... <laughs> it might make our brains melt, but I'm going to talk about the ones that have the strongest association with hair loss. And the strongest is that if you have a male relative, uh, a relative that was uh, assigned male at birth and is cisgender who has experienced balding you are five to six times more likely to also develop hair loss and this relative the the more uh, the closer you are to this relative the higher the risk that you have and for people who never take testosterone or their body their body makes less testosterone which converts to less dht you're less likely to experience balding because that gene of hair loss is more expressed the more testosterone and dht that you have so as people who uh, are trans if i weren't to take if I weren't to take testosterone, I probably would never experience hair loss, but now that I'm taking testosterone, that gene is being expressed. And because that gene is being expressed, my father, uh, he experienced some hair loss. He still has hair in the back of his head, but he did experience the bitemporal hair loss. Um, I am more likely to develop hair loss over time. And I will say that we need to make a clear distinction between hair loss over time versus hair loss in your first couple of years on testosterone because your hair is going to fall off when you start testosterone. It doesn't mean it's androgenic alopecia. It's because the hair pattern we adopt once we take testosterone is the classical male pattern of hair. So we'll lose our baby hair. So my temporal region, I noticed that I lost some hair around here, but that's normal because most uh, males uh, who are assigned male at birth and who are testosterone dominated will experience will have this hair pattern so it wasn't that the first year that i was experiencing hair loss per se it was just that i was losing hairs associated uh with feminine features and gaining the male pattern of hair that most uh, cisgender men have another huge link to whether or not you will have hair loss is if your biological mother um experiences hair loss that means that uh the, the the genetics are very very strong if there are cisgender women in your family that experience hair loss that means the genetics are very 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 sensitive to, to testosterone which means even estrogen dominant members of your family are experiencing hair loss even with the minute amounts of testosterone that they have now are there any studies that specifically looked at hair loss among transgender men well yes there's a couple uh the sample sizes aren't huge just because trans people are not represented in research and generalizable research that much but one specific study looked at 50 trans men um, on hormone replacement therapy and followed them for about 10 years and uh, what they saw was that approximately 63% of patients had some form of hair loss which could honestly mean the initial hair loss we get around here uh, that doesn't really associate with uh, long-term balding but out of that uh, out of those 50 patients over 10 years 31%, a third of them develop severe androgenic alopecia, which means they, they, they experience pretty severe balding. Now, I really do want to emphasize the limitations of the study. They only followed these um, subjects for 10 years. We don't know how much impact it has on hair loss in 20 years, 30 years. And we know that from um, looking at the cisgender population, cisgender men end up losing hair uh, in their third and fourth decade of life. So if you start testosterone in like in your 20s, um, you have to add 30 more years to that because you you haven't taken you weren't in a, in a testosterone dominant system for most of your life so if you add 30 more years you're probably and this is just an assumption there's no research studies on it uh, this is the assumption i'm making based on medical data is that um you'll probably if you do experience some form of balding it'll be later than most cisgender men that's basically the conclusion of this video um so the strongest predisposition to hair loss for trans masculine people who are thinking about starting testosterone is a fa familial relatives if you have a, a cisgender male relative that's has um balding uh then you are five to six times more likely to also develop balding as you take testosterone over the years and even more 
uh, higher risk is if you have a cisgender woman direct relative who experiences balding that is even more linked to whether or not you will experience balding while on testosterone. So those are some of the things that you should uh, take into account when you are thinking about starting testosterone and you're worried about balding. Like I've said, there's a lot of medications now to help prevent balding. I actually take some. I take some both naturopathic. Um, I don't take any medical ones, but I did for a while, but I decided not to anymore but i'll cover that in a future video i hope you learned something i hope you got something out of this video i hope that you'll share this information with someone who might benefit from this information and of course follow me on instagram and twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work and i'll see y'all in the next video Mwah. this is ben